So a colleague of mine told me that he's going to play football manager and then he's going to pick Chelsea Football Club, his favorite team, and then he's going to transform Nicholas Jackson into prime Didier Drogba. Are <laughs> you serious? Hello everyone, I'm the Box to Box Investigator. Right now, we'll be digging deep into Maurizio Pochettino's Chelsea Football Club. Now, Chelsea is currently ranked 10th overall in the league standings, but some promising results against Arsenal and Manchester City and a very, very dominant win against Tottenham Hotspur has placed a lot of optimism for the Blues this season. So what makes them tick? Let's further investigate. All right, so Chelsea's formation or lineup under Maurizio Pochettino Features the following, uh, Sanchez as your goalkeeper, and then on the right, it could be Gusto, it could be, uh, be Reese James, your two center backs, De Sassi and Thiago Silva. Uh, you have uh, Kukurea on the left, although that could also be the role that Colwell could occupy. Then you got Moises Caicedo as your defensive mid, Enzo Fernandez as your central mid, Connor Gallagher as your central attacking mid on the right. On the right, this could be Cole Palmer, or this could be Raheem Sterling, depending on the matchup. On the left, this could be Raheem Sterling or Mudrik. Up front is Nicholas Jackson or Cole Palmer. Both offer some sort of variations for Chelsea, with Palmer adding more control because of the fact that he can operate as a false nine, he can roam around the pitch. And then you have Nicholas Jackson, who's like a threat on the break because of his speed and transitions. Now, one of the biggest question marks is that why is Enzo Fernandez in the deeper uh, midfield areas when a lot of pundits or a lot of experts would argue that he's actually better suited up front? Now, I actually agree with their sentiments because I've watched games where Enzo Fernandez would actually dictate the match with, with his passing up front, like in that game against Liverpool. But if you look at the current setup or the current dynamic of Chelsea Football Club, uh, Enzo is like the most reliable and the most fluid passer in the Chelsea lineup because he can actually switch the play, he can actually deliver long passes compared to, let's say, like Conor Gallagher who is very limited because if you look at Conor Gallagher's play style, he prefers short passes, uh, not to mention he's more of a player who likes to connect the dots. And if you look at ga games where Conor Gallagher is located in deeper areas, like for example in that game against Liverpool, uh, Liverpool would actually deny Conor Gallagher's like passing angles from the deeper areas. So that would actually cause a lot of problems for Chelsea Football Club in terms of the build-up, where because of Conor Gallagher's like uh, issues or deficiencies and teams just capitalizing on it, all of a sudden the opposition generates goal scoring opportunities. So to limit that sort of like uh, problem, uh, Pochettino decided to put uh, Enzo in the deeper areas while Gallagher goes in the advanced positions and it actually works wonders because Gallagher's positioning is going to be key for Chelsea especially up front. So how does this apply to Chelsea Football Club? Well let's say the ball is given to Enzo Fernandez. Now here's a catch. Enzo is one of the most flexible passes for Chelsea and a lot of teams are aware of that. So what they'll do is to try their best to shut him down and that's going to cause some problems for Enzo Fernandez. So, how does Chelsea address this? Now, Enzo is, can actually uh, try to switch to play, but obviously he needs help in this situation, just in case things don't really pan out well for him. Well, Chelsea's uh, reinforcements are all read readily available, right? So your fullback's already in position there. Uh, Sterling will always be there for support. Gallagher is available when needed. Moises Caicedo is always ready. Nicholas Jackson is there in case Enzo needs additional help. So what's going to happen is that Enzo can actually control the left side of the pitch. Or actually Chelsea can control the left side of the pitch. So they can move the ball around here. And then if Enzo needs to go for the switch, he can do so by giving it to Moises Caicedo. And give it to a teammate. Or if he can directly go to Cole Palmer, that will be so much good. Or if not Cole Palmer, Nicholas Jackson who can just penetrate further forward and this is how Chelsea generates like most of their transitional plays which they're sort of renowned this season so they, they're actually positioned in areas where they can support each other really well 
So you can see here, there's a formation here. And then Connor Gallagher could also deliver some pass to Nicholas Jackson on the break. They can go for the switch in case uh, things are sort of like uh, iffy on the left. Not to mention Chelsea's like secret weapon, Diago Silva, Diago Silva, long pass to Cole Palmer or Nicholas Jackson for Chelsea to generate their attack. So that's one method for Chelsea to be really, really dangerous. Like they're known for their transitional setups with Nicholas Jackson wrecking Havelock when he gets the opportunity on the break. Now, another key strategy from Chelsea under Maurizio Pochettino is their usage of a 4-4-2 formation with the emphasis of shutting down the central areas. And this actually works wonders for Chelsea, especially especially when you discover what the opposition is capable of doing. For example, let's look at a team like Arsenal Football Club. Uh, as I set up their formation. Now, Arsenal, they can build up from the back, right? They can build up from the back. And Chelsea have the pieces to go for the high press. As I mentioned earlier, Gallagher, Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, these are three reliable uh, players who can defend or press up front. So if, for example, Arsenal are going to build up from these deeper areas, you have players chasing towards them, and then you have either... Enzo or Caicedo shutting down this other lane. Not to mention, you have the wide players already positioned for the counter-attack. So, for example, if Arsenal turns the ball over on the left, and then all of a sudden there's a steal that happens, there's opportunity for Chelsea to generate a transitional play. If Arsenal plays the ball centrally, gives it to, let's say, Jorginho or Declan Rice, and all of a sudden turnover happens, and Chelsea can generate a transitional play. But of course, uh, Arsenal could manage to penetrate through this sort of like a setup from Chelsea, and that will force Chelsea to go with their coveted 4 4 2 shape. Now, this makes a lot of sense for, for Chelsea to deny the central areas, because one thing I noticed about Arsenal is they love to overload because Zinchenko here would actually occupy these areas. He's in the central positions. And then not to mention he's being, and then you see the other players of Chelsea further hounding the central areas. Uh, what's going to happen for Arsenal is, all right, so what, what's going to, what's going to, how are you going to deal with this? Well, they can actually play wide. They can play wide, which uh, Saka gets the ball. But once he gets the ball, he's being hampered here by Kukurea and the pieces of Chelsea Football Club are there to pound Saka. And... In case he turns the ball over, Chelsea are now poised to prepare themselves on the break. So they have the pieces here ready to pass the ball. As I mentioned, Chelsea's positioning has been key or integral. Enzo, for example, gets the ball. He could give it to his teammates. And all of a sudden, a play is made here where now Chelsea can generate an attack. So that's like one method. So Chelsea, it's their positioning that's been key. The sort of like control that they have these areas where they can just make plays out of nowhere it's going to be something that the opposition needs to watch out and then let's look at some other notable matchups all right so man city man city loves to overload the central areas because their formation allows them to overload the central areas they line up with a three two four one in which you have your two here and you have your two here so there's already a that instant box midfield, but Chelsea's players are positioned already or a prime position to make sure that the central areas were not gonna have some sort of space. So Man City, like Arsenal, would try to play in the, in the wide areas, but Chelsea's players are geared towards shutting this down. And as I mentioned, turnover, positional play, another transitional attack. Man City can also try to lob, lob the pass to Erling Holland up front, but do note that a lot of teams are already aware of that. So they've already marked Erling Holland already. So that's how Chelsea, with their 4 4 2 formation, was able to slow down Man City, denying the central areas. And then they could use that 4 4 2 to overload certain areas of the pitch, like on the right or maybe on the left, force a turnover, transitional play. Now, let's look at another team, for example, Tottenham Hotspur. What they normally do is they actually send James Madison 
to drop in these areas, but he's already encountered some heavy resistance because the central areas have already been denied by Chelsea Football Club. Alternatively, they use Pedro Porro. They use Pedro Porro to actually go inside if they have to, but you know, Chelsea with the denial of the central areas. So what happens is Tottenham will try to move the ball on the left flank. For example, Brendan Johnson is here, but then Chelsea players positioning themselves, pressing Tottenham in these areas. Turnover happens, ball movement occurs, Nicholas Jackson is ready to break through, and once the ball is given to him, goal scoring threat. And things got worse for Tottenham, especially when they were down to 10 men, to 9 men, and then uh, they were actually playing high up the field despite being down by, by 10 to 9 men. And then Chelsea with Nicholas Jackson up front, given his pace and speed, together with Sterling, it's just they're just gonna blitz past Tottenham. And that's how Chelsea managed to take command of that game. Now, given Chelsea's somewhat uh, decent outings, especially against the top-seeded teams in the Premier League, this, make, this raises a lot of questions for the club. Uh, is this already the best version of Chelsea with Gallagher as your central attacking midfielder roaming around, with Nicholas Jackson as like your speedster up front, with Cole Palmer? being mo the most well-rounded player on the right or in the central areas who can also drop deep needed or because of like Enzo Fernandez providing that sort of fluid passing lanes. Is this really the best version of Chelsea? Because we haven't yet seen other players like Romeo Lavia as well as Christopher Nkuku. I mean, these players could add a different level of dynamism for Chelsea. So this version of Pochettino with Jackson Gallagher, is this already the peak version of Chelsea? Or will something else emerge, especially once the injury crisis has been addressed? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea under Maurizio Pochettino. If you'd like to leave your thoughts or comments about this version of Chelsea, feel free to do so in the comment section below. Please don't forget to leave a like or subscribe to my YouTube channel for updates. Until next time, detectives, see you around.